Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Jeremy Scott Films Podcast or Radio Show. Coming to you on this Saturday with an episode titled 37 Success Tips coming via my homie Pat Rigsby. And Pat has helped me just as much, if not more so, than anybody uh, when it comes to my business life and the progress it's made over the past decade plus. And these aren't, you know, tactical things. These are foundational tips that can help you be successful in your fitness, your nutrition, your finances, your education, your relationships, and just about everything you do in life. That's why I wanted to drop them on all of you guys today. And admittedly, before I kick off, I am on the struggle bus right now. We are puppy sitting, and uh, you forget that puppies don't really sleep through the night. And especially when we have another dog in our house, it's, uh, it creates a dynamic. Not only that, the pissing and shitting uh, uncontrollably is something else too. So uh, I'm a little bit exhausted right now because I didn't really get to sleep through the night. And so to all the, the parents out there who raise small children, respect to you guys, especially the women. You guys are fucking superheroes, man. I don't know how you do it and still work out and function and, and be a... A human being uh, having to endure that uh, day in and day out. Literally, women are by far the dominant sex. I don't know how us as dudes even think that's not the case because the fact of you even having a kid seems like the most traumatic experience in the world, let alone being the, the main provider to take care of it and wake up with it each night and uh, and still be able to exist on this planet is, uh, is mind-blowing. So I, I look up to you guys uh, to a level you'll never understand. And uh, with that, I do want to say a quick thank you to everybody who sent a message about us paying off our house. It truly does mean more to me than you'll know uh, because that was an emotional tie-in for me. Specifically, hundreds of emails and DMs and messages. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, by far the most commented positive thing I've ever put out uh, in the past 10 plus years. And obviously I live a public life and so we share basically everything with you guys. And that was by far the biggest one. And uh, on the same note, also the most negative comments I've received on, on anything, uh, for that matter. And uh, I have a pretty good gauge of, of when we share stuff of what's going to happen. And uh, I have extremely thick skin and uh, born with the DNA of not giving a fuck. So please do not feel bad for me. And all the people who are like, oh, you know, the people who are hating on you, don't worry about it. Trust me, uh, I'm not. I take it in stride. Uh, having been on the men's health platform for years and years and years and bodybuilding.com before that, I've had people rip my life apart um, from head to toe, uh, literally inside, outside, how I talk to, you know, you know, body parts, you name it, and, and just crushing me on all fronts. And so this is obviously no different. I know a lot of people, you know, think talking about money is taboo or sex is taboo or religion is taboo and respect to you. If that's how you choose to live your life, I, I'm nobody to judge. Uh, on the same note, like you don't have to follow me in my life and what I do. And uh, if you don't like what I'm doing, you can always just delete and block me from your life. But if you feel you need to write a comment of, of how big of a piece of shit I am and how stupid I am for paying off my house and how you would never share something like that, that's fine too. I, I'm nobody to judge. Uh, on the same note, we share it not to say, hey, look how awesome we are, but it's an outline for people who, if you don't want to be in debt, you don't have to be. That's why I share the origin story so much. I'm not some, you know, out of touch, you know, movie star and somebody who's making $20 million a year. That's not who I am. I'm a normal dude. I wake up at four o'clock every day. A lot of times I don't leave here till eight or nine. I work hundred hour weeks and I have so for a decade. And for the first five or six years, I made no fucking money. I probably made about a dollar an hour. That's what it equates to. And you have to die if you want to run a small business. And I've given up everything along the way. I've given up so much free time and more things than anybody will ever know. And I don't share a lot of that because I don't want to be on a soapbox and be like, oh, poor me. It's my choice. I chose to run this business. I chose to call it after my name. All these things, I made this bet, I have to lie in it. I'm not fighting a war in Afghanistan. I'm not, you know, battling fucking cancer, like doing some real hard shit. I'm, I'm running a business and I work a lot. And at this point, because I've dedicated so much time, effort, energy, and given up a social life and given up free time and, and time with friends and family, I have acquired a set of skills that can help a certain amount of people and that can make a certain amount of money. And all I did was pay off a debt I agreed to pay. Seven years ago, I signed up for a mortgage. I didn't have the cash to pay for it, so I had to borrow money from the bank. And I paid that debt off. And I did it as quick as I possibly could because for me, 
It meant I can sleep easier at night not knowing I had debt hanging over my head. For me, I know my wife will be more free and more inspired and she won't stress about her job as much and do those things. And if at some point we both choose not to work these 100 hour weeks and not to make the money we make, we won't have to because we don't have debt hanging over our heads. We'll be more inspired, happy people. That's why I shared it. And for all the people who are like, you're such a fucking idiot, you could have took that money and invested it and made more money doing this. Look, I'm a, I'm a smart enough kid. I'm around people way smarter than me every single day. I have advisors and people in my corner who I can bounce things off of when I want to. It's not about that. It's about living a less stress-free life. And sharing it is about saying, hey, if you grew up like I did, sleeping on a fucking bunk bed, broke as shit, having your grandpa having to bring food over to your house so you and your sister can fucking eat, being dead broke your whole life, starting something from the ground up, building it to this, if you can be dead ass broke 10 years ago and grow up with no money and nothing, you can get to the point that I'm at today. And well, Jeremy, I could never do it as fast as you. You don't have to. If it took me, you know, seven years or if it took me getting serious for it for 14 months, if it takes you 26 months, you can still make it happen. The point of sharing it is to give you an outline and an example. If it's something you want to do, it can be done. Because if two kids who have debt up their ass and aren't making any money, 10 years later can change their life, you can do it too. And odds are you can probably do it a lot faster. That's why we share the story. It's no different than when I share fitness stuff here. I share, I did this workout with this weight in this time. Well, that's probably not realistic for you either. The weight that I'm using and the time that I'm doing it might not be the same, but you scale it and use it as an outline, an example, if you choose to. That's why we share those things. We do it to help people. That's all this is. And again, I've given up a lot to be here. And all I try to do every single day is do my best to help everybody get to where they want to go. And hopefully the, sh the stories that I share are inspiring to you guys and motivate you to do something. That's all they're meant for. I don't need another pat on the fucking back. I got plenty of them along the way. I'm okay. And I share the thing about, you know, people being overly critical. I know a lot of you guys will read the comments and be like, I can't believe people are so mean. I've lived in this space for so long. If you think those are negative things, you have no idea the amount of shit that we really get every single day. The amount of things that come into my inbox that people tell me how much they fucking hate me, right? That's why, again, we keep a threat folder both here in the files uh, and on our computer in case I go missing someday because if somebody comes to murder me and I become a Dateline episode, hopefully I can make it a little bit easier for the police and they can turn to a Netflix documentary and hopefully my wife gets the money or whatever it is. But all, all jokes aside from that, us public people on the internet receive so much negative shit from people it's beyond belief and i'm going to share this really quick and then we'll get to the podcast um emily sky if you guys follow her on instagram emily is ridiculously popular i think the time i met emily i think she had like 12 million people on facebook following her i had no idea who she was at the time we're just talk we're, at we're in palm springs just chatting back and forth and uh, actually filmed a, a series for men's health out there uh, together with the reebok team so she was there i was there and she's uber popular uh, from australia beautiful She's a mom. She's about to have her second kid. Beautiful girl. Super nice. I don't have a bad thing to say about her. Um, seeing her in person and watching her stuff, you know, evolve over the years. And she shared a post on Instagram a couple of days ago that she got in her DMs. It's just her taking like a side shot of her baby and her, her, you know, giant pregnant belly. And the comment was, I hope your baby dies. And then see who's going to come post these quotes. And that was the, the response she got. And the next one was, get over yourself, you fuck. And so somebody wrote that. Somebody wrote, I hope your baby dies. Get over yourself, you fuck. Now, she's a human being. She has a kid. I followed her for a long time. There's nothing that she posts that's controversial. There's nothing that she's saying that would offend anybody. And even if there was, there's no place for that. So just know messages like that. That's not the first message like that she's gotten. And I'm sure it won't be the last. And these are the kind of things that we get on a daily or weekly basis from people who just hate us because I don't know what it is. And so the takeaway is don't don't feel bad for me and understand this stuff does happen all the time. And it, maybe it's a thing with social media. I don't know how to control it or fix it, but just know it, it does go on and it does exist. And uh, for some reason behind a phone uh, and in certain apps, people like to, you know, the keyboard warriors like to comment and say things and, and drag people down. And so if you're a person out there who wants to start a business or you want to share your story about, you know, losing weight or being debt free or your religion or whatever you want to share, understand 
there's always going to be people who talk shit and say things and feel like you shouldn't share it, you shouldn't talk about it, and you shouldn't be putting that out there. But if you know in your hearts of hearts you feel okay to do it, I would urge you to share it because there's always going to be haters and detractors and people who think you're an idiot for doing it, and you can't change your mind anyway. That's why on the internet I never try to. When I comment, I try to say, hey man, here's my point of view, here's why we do it, and I wish you all the best. And if you don't like me in my life, you can block me and unfollow me, and I don't even have to exist. And that's the way I look at it. When we, we post things, just for all my business owners out there, I, again, I have a pretty good temperature of, of what's going to happen when we share stuff and what people are going to do and say, and I can live with it, and I don't, I don't lose any sleep over it. I look at what we do kind of like Amazon, right? When I go buy a product on Amazon, I look, how many reviews does it have? It has 5,000 reviews. And almost all of them are five stars, but of the 5,000 reviews, 800 of them are people saying it sucks shit. I tend to go with the majority over the minority there. So if it has mostly positive reviews and there's only a couple people chirping, I'm gonna go with what a majority of the people think. And that's kind of how we make our decisions. What I post and what we share isn't for everybody. And every post and every comment and every video isn't supposed to be consumed by everyone. You pick and choose the things you want to take from it. And that's how we do it. So that's just my quick uh, little chat with that. Just so you guys are clear, um, a lot of things go on in the social media world that I, I think some of you who aren't in the position that we're in don't get to see and hear. So please don't feel bad for me because there are friends of mine and colleagues who are getting way worse stuff on a daily basis. And I don't really understand why. And typically the bigger it gets, uh, the more of those comments tend to uh, kind of fall by the wayside. And so if you're a creator out there and you wanna share and do something, don't be afraid of that. Don't let the, the small amount of negative people deter you because there's so much more positivity and there's so much more upside that comes from doing this than the little bit of hate that does come with it. But you have to understand it. And I always say you can't win the internet. And, and the day I knew that really was when I look at like a LeBron James who has done everything right in his career uh, there's really not a bad thing you can say about the guy, and, and he's the most criticized athlete uh, of all time, hands down. And so if LeBron's going to get crushed, I got no fucking chance in this world. So uh, with that said, we're going to talk real quick on 37 success tips, uh, which I believe, again, these are foundational things you guys can take with you and apply to every area of your life. If you run a business, if you're in a company trying to climb the corporate ladder, if you're trying to get better with your eating, your training, or just overall be a better human, these are for you. So without further delay, number one, treat others the way you want to be treated. Uh, this goes without saying. Number two, be early. On time is tolerable. Late is never accepted. Again, I don't know if this is a generational thing, but I always share the story of my dad typically would be places 15 minutes early. And if you weren't 15 minutes early, you were late. Now, my mom, love her to death, my mom would be the person who would like, if something was at seven o'clock, she'd leave the house at like 6.55 and maybe be on time or maybe be a couple minutes late. My dad would never do that. And now my grandpa, uh, my mom's dad actually, before he passed, my grandpa would be 30 minutes early everywhere. So he is like the next level above my dad. And I don't know if that's a generational thing. And the story I've shared in the past is remember when I had my wisdom teeth out, my grandpa took me and I believe the clinic opened up at eight o'clock and it's probably about 10 minutes from our house. And my grandpa's sitting in our driveway at 7.30 in the morning. Now we get there at 7.40 and there's nobody even there to unlock the doors for 20 minutes, but that's the mentality he had. So be early is the takeaway. On time is tolerable, late is never accepted. And when you're late to stuff once in a while, if it happens because of life, I get it. But it's the people who are habitually late over time that all it's really saying is that you value your time more than theirs. So you think that their time is not as valuable as yours. So if you start to think of it that way, you know, you have to start honoring other people's time. Number three, do what you say you're going to do. Try to do more, never do less. I love that one. Number four, focus on what you can control. Or as my old boss, Corey Smith used to say, control your controllables and I've always said worrying is like a rocking chair. You know, it gives you something to do, but it really doesn't get you anywhere. And I understand a lot of times that's uh, easier said than done, but you can only control what you can control. Number five, learning from the experience of others, not just your own. This is 
if I'm good at something, it's modeling, you know, behavior and learning from what other people did, not just from my own experience. And that doesn't always have to be positive stuff. There's a lot of, you know, examples and lessons you can get from people who fuck up and fail and people who stumble and fail and then obviously come back. So I think if you look around you, the people who you think are doing it the way you want to do it, and not just mean like financial success, I mean like happiness and people who look like they have a good balance, if that's what you want to have, or if you see people doing what you want to do, kind of mimic the things that they're doing doing that are you know admirable or as we like to say kind of standing on the shoulders of giants can can get you ahead real quick real fast number six live your life like most people do and you're going to settle for what most people get live your life like most people do and you're going to settle for what most people get if you want to live an extraordinary life you're going to have to do some extraordinary shit you're going to probably have to exhaust yourself you're going to have to push past your comfort zone and beyond, you know, what you think is even capable of you. And I share this like along the way of, you know, just training my physical body or building this business or going through college and school, I couldn't do what most kids could do because I wasn't as smart as most kids. I had to study my fucking ass off for way more hours than, you know, my buddy Kiefer, way more hours than Isaac did. Because why? Those dudes are way smarter than me. They're just, they're naturally just smarter humans. I don't know what it is. Book smarts, they just get stuff that I don't. And I would have to read and read and memorize and memorize and drag my ass to the math tutor and sit there all night and just read over the same materials a hundred times where they could bullshit it for 20 minutes and get better grades than me. So A, you have to understand who you are. I think obviously playing to your strengths, but if you do what most people do, you'll get what most people get. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. I'm not judging anybody. If you want to be the average of every American, then by all means do it. But if you want to be beyond that, you can't just do what they do. So if the average person makes 46,000 bucks a year and is 40 pounds overweight, and they also you know sit and binge watch Netflix for 14 hours every weekend and eat and drink like shit, that's where you're going to be at. But if you want to do something beyond that. If you change the daily habits, you can get there. Number seven, trying isn't enough. It's an excuse. Either you're doing something or you're not. Now I'm all, all a fan of, you know, giving, you know, your best effort. And in a lot of things, you know, we say in the business world, you get paid for done, right? And it's like, well, I tried to do my mobility today. No, you either did 10 minutes of mobility or you didn't. Well, I tried to eat right today. No, no. You either did eat well or you ate like shit. There's no in between. That's kind of how I look at everything. You get paid for done. And you can try, quote unquote, all you want. But at the end of the day, you didn't try to brush your teeth. You didn't try to wipe your ass. You know, you didn't try to put your clothes on. You did it. Simple takeaway. Number eight. You never fail until you quit trying. I truly believe this, and it's one of the simplest things there is. And I guess the way I look at it, you can quit anytime. You can always quit. But it's the people who don't and just kind of keep going and are diligent and stubborn and keep putting in the work that the awesome things tend to happen. And I always looked at it like this. Obviously, there's things that you might start and you're just completely terrible at, but you have to give something a certain amount of time. It's why you can't just jump from diet to diet week after week. It's why you can't try an exercise program for you know 20 days and then just punt it. You have to give it a decent amount of time and let it run its course. And even if you do something and it doesn't work out, it's a learning experience and something you can improve on the next time. And to me, you know, real failure is people who just quit and, you know, oh, this doesn't work for me. I'm just going to give up. And I look at health and fitness and eating in that light like, well, uh, Jeremy, this program didn't work for me and, you know, tracking macros didn't work for me. So I'm just going to quit. I'm like, well, quit and do what? Eat like shit the rest of your life? Be active the rest of your life? How's it going to roll that way? Not very well. Number nine, if you want to achieve something, write it down. I'm a huge fan of this. There's a lot of the personal development stuff I might not subscribe to. Uh, I'm not a huge affirmation guy. A lot of things I, I think are kind of hokey and sometimes I think they're bullshit. But the writing things down is real. Every goal I've ever had in life, I've written it down. And I've written myself several notes over the years, uh, both just tactical business stuff, personal stuff with my wife, relationships, places we've wanted to travel, goals we've wanted to achieve, and they all come true. 
And when you can see something staring you in the face over and over and over again, if nothing else, it kind of sinks in the brain and sets as a reminder of this is something that is important to you. And if you have to walk by it, we put it on a refrigerator at home. I post, if you guys see my desk on YouTube right now, I have like a million post-its like up in my office that I constantly am looking at and seeing. And they're just reminders of things I want to get done. That's why I'm a huge fan of inspirational quotes posted over on walls and just listening to certain audio books and certain podcasts to put me in the right mindset to keep going. And uh, if you see it often enough, even if at first doesn't mean much, you do that shit for six months or a year, it starts to sink in. Number 10, make your goals specific and measurable. The more specific you are, the more quickly you are able to achieve them. So if it's like, hey, I want to lose 52 pounds in how long? 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, you want to pay off your house, you want to get a degree, you want to start a business, you want to write a book, you want to travel a world, you know, where do you want to travel to? What kind of book do you want to write? How long is it going to be? You know, what is the timeline on that? And even if you fall short of that, at least you set it out there. At least there's, again, I look at it this way. If your goal is to lose 52 pounds in a year and you failed miserably and you lost 37 pounds in the year, is that a failure? I don't think so. So again, they're just nice outlines and metrics. And again, if you're specific with those goals and you write them down, boom, now you're winning. Number 11, plan every day. Success isn't an accident. I think this goes for how you spend your money, how you spend your time, the food you're gonna put in your body, the workout that you're gonna do, and just kind of allotting what are the most important things you need to get done every single day. And one of the hacks I do, which I've shared before, is every night before I go to sleep, I write it down. I have a little Word document that I type out kind of what my day will look like. Obviously, we have a schedule here of what we run by, but I also will do little hand notes of, of things, big rocks, little rocks, of what I want to get done and what I have to get done. So what are the things that are non-negotiable today, and what are the things that could maybe slide to the next day? But I map out the day. And I'll say this. I try to make the most of every free minute here. And that's what running a small business is. And that's, you know, why people who, you know, sometimes say things like, oh, well, it's easy for you. No, no. At a normal job, if you work for a giant company, you can probably fuck around 10 hours of the week. So if you work 40 hours, you're really only working probably 30 hours because you're going to bullshit on social media and scroll around ESPN or CNN or whatever you're looking at or bullshitting with your friends or taking a little bit longer lunch. You're going to get the same paycheck either way. I know people who work corporate jobs who can basically punt a whole day or go do three hours of yoga and still get paid the same money or be at their desk just fucking around not doing much and they get the same paycheck. It doesn't work like that for me in this life. I can't waste those minutes because if I'm not doing something to move the needle forward, I'm for surely rolling backwards. And if I don't care about it and I'm not leading from the front, Jacob and Jacob and Monica and Matt and them, they're not going to give a shit either. Why, why are they going to work? harder than the guy who's the boss is going to work. They just won't. But if I leave from the front and I set the example, they'll work hard too. So I plan every single day. And even if we're here with groups of people, if I have 12 free minutes in between a group, I'm on DM returns, I'm on email returns, I'm getting some stuff filed, I'm doing as much as I can with every free minute. And I plan that out to try not to waste 12 minutes here, nine minutes here, 14 minutes here. Those little minutes compound over time and add up to be hours and days and weeks over the course of the year. That's how you really start to success hack. Number 12, write out tomorrow's plan the night before and review it throughout the course of the day. Again, like I just shared. Uh, I probably honestly learned that from Pat, um, but I just always found it to be a super useful tip. That way I don't wake up and be like, oh, what am I supposed to do today? Because I don't have a boss and there's no book uh, in this life of how to do it right and what to do it and when to do it. So I basically just make it up as I go. But I find if I have some semblance of an outline the evening before, I tend to do better the next day as opposed to just like, oh, what do I do now? Um, building a routine in the schedule almost like a robot seems to be the best option for me. Number 13, if you want your business to be more successful, apply the 80-20 principle. Now, obviously in fitness, we talk about this a lot, like, you know, eating, right? And again, I don't, I'm not a huge, you know, it's not my religion to believe that, you know, eat good 80% of the time, eat like shit 20% of the time. But if you want to be more successful, you kind of have to apply that where you're going to give this, you know, I guess, perfect, ideal, max effort 80% of the time. 
and the other 20% of the time you're at least doing something. I think there's a sweet spot somewhere in there. And if, if we're eating, if that works for you guys, that's cool. So if out of every 10 meals, eight of them are perfect and two of them are not you know, ideal, I think you'll be healthier than the average person doing it that way. And out of every 10 workouts, if eight of them are you know, pretty good and two of them are just you going through the motions, I think you'll be pretty successful there too. So it's kind of a good principle to follow. You could go 90-10 if you're a little bit more type A and a little bit more driven. But uh, somewhere in between there, and again, like every workout can't be perfect. Every workout can't be perfect. Sometimes you just have to do the best with what you got, with how you feel. And I find the people who can do that are more successful than the people who completely just kind of punt it and tank it and give in when they don't have the optimal workout setting or the optimum eating setting. 14, discipline yourself. Focus your energy, your thoughts, and actions on the tasks at hand and eliminate useless distractions. That's the gym. Number 15, schedule everything. Personal time too. Why wouldn't that be as important as an appointment with a client? And this is something we do at our house. We schedule date nights. We schedule time to watch a Netflix series. We schedule time to walk a dog. We schedule time to walk bikes. We schedule time to have sex. And I'm, we're not ashamed to share that. We're two super busy adults who have very demanding careers. And we have a lot of things going on with friends and family. And this business, you know, can swallow me up if I let it. And so we schedule stuff like that. Because if we don't, you find yourself in a rut, just kind of like going through the motions. And if there's one thing I like in life, it's sex for sure. So why would I not schedule that and make it an important part of my, you know, daily or weekly routine, uh, depending on how tired I am. And so I think that's important for you guys to do. And maybe just... What we do at our house, we, we try to be really diligent about little things like, you know, when we come home, you know, give each other a kiss, do the same thing in the morning when you leave, you know, texting each other nice things, leaving, you know, nice little notes and messages, and just really being diligent with the habits and, and understanding like this, especially if you're married or in a relationship, this is the person that you want to be with. This is your, the person, they're in the, they're in the foxhole with you every day, the only person that you're probably going to share all your stories and secrets with. This is the only person that can really, you know, be there for you 24-7, 365. So treat them that way and schedule a time where you guys can be with just you guys together or just be with your friends or you schedule your time where you go to church or you go do whatever is important to you. I think that's vital. So we do so much of that at work, yet we don't do it in our personal life, which doesn't make any sense to me. Number 16, outsource delegate and eliminate things that provide a low return on your time and your business. I do this with everything. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff here that I have to do because it's my voice and it's me. And there's a lot of things I don't do here anymore. Like we have an AC and heating company that comes in and services our stuff. We have a plumbing company. We have a cleaning service. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, I'm not good at it. I suck at it. I hate it. Um, these guys do it way better than me. And I can make way more money doing what I'm good at and let them do what they're good at. And it solves itself. It's the same thing about our house. Like we have a pool guy who comes and take care of our pool. Doesn't cost that much. And at least that way I know it's going to be cleaned and the chemicals are right. That way I don't jump in it and have my skin melt off because I fucked it up along the way. So I think if you can outsource the things that you don't like and you're not great at in your life and it saves you time, it's all worth it. Same thing for your house. If you're in a financial position where... You can have somebody come in and help you do, whether it's, in, landscaping in Arizona is, is different. It's like, in the Midwest, your grass goes to snow, 